Hi everyone. Now we are going to discuss about dengue fever, which is one of the type of insect-borne diseases. Dengue fever is an acute febrile disease and is widely distributed in regions with a tropical and subtropical climates. And this dengue fever is also known as breakbone fever as we are going to have the feeling of muscles and joint pains where uh, having the breaking of bones so that's why this dengue fever also known as breakbone fever and it is a mosquito borne infection that is it is uh, going to be because of an, a mosquito bite called as Aedes aegypti which is going to transmit a virus called as dengue virus which is a causative agent of this dengue fever then the characteristic features of this dengue fever are number one fever muscle and joint pains lymphadenopathy and rash then moving to the causative agent as we already discussed that the causative agent of dengue fever is dengue virus which is a single standard rna possessing the positive strand and this virus family is flaviviridae and the genus is flavi virus and the virus particles are spherical in shape so you can see here it's a spherical in shape measuring about 40 to 50 nanometer in diameter and the capsid if you observe here the capsid protein is icosahedral symmetry and it is enveloped by an lipid bilayer and this is also going to possess the glycoprotein spikes the virus genome that is single standard RNA is about 11,000 bases which codes for three structural proteins that is capsid protein, M protein and E protein. Along with these three structural proteins it is also coding for seven non-structural proteins like a non-structural protein 1, 2, 2A, 2B and then 3, 4, 4A, 4B and non-structural protein 5 like that totally seven non-structural proteins are there and a short non-coding region on both the five prime and three prime ends. so there are four serotypes of dengue viruses like uh, dengue virus 1 dengue virus 2 3 and 4 the dengue virus 1 was first isolated from hawaii in the year 1944 and the dengue virus 2 was isolated uh, in the same year that from New Guinea and the 3 and 4 were isolated from Philippines in the year 1956. And one most important thing that we have to remember is the considerable cross reactivity is observed among the different serotypes and recovery from one infection by one serotype does not provide the complete immunity against infection by other types. Thus, individuals can have as many as four dengue infections in their life one with each zero type then moving to the epidemiology this dengue fever is going to be considered as a most important mosquito borne disease affecting humans next to malaria the humans and Aedes mosquitoes are recognized as reservoirs and vectors respectively and the dengue virus is transmitted from one person to another person by the mosquito name Aedes aegypti. Okay, and uh, there are other species of this one also, like uh, Aedes albopictus, is a mosquito which was of Asian origin, is also believed to spread the dengue fever. Humans get dengue virus infection from the bite of an infected mosquito. Mosquitoes become infected, that means here, this mosquito is going to bite an infected person. Now, these mosquitoes are becoming infected and then later transmit this infection to other people by their bite. Now, the mosquitoes are going to be of infective after a period of 8 to 14 days, which we consider it as uh, extensive incubation period. Once a mosquito is getting infective, it remains so far uh, of the life about one to three months or even more. The, this dengue has been increasing worldwide over the last few decades and today it ranks as the most important vector-borne diseases. Majorly most subtropical and 
subtropical regions where Aedes mosquitoes exist are potentially endemic areas of this disease that is dengue fever. In urban campion, uh, that is in uh, urban communities where dengue epidemics are explosive and often start during the rainy season where the vector mosquitoes are abundant. The reason for this is these uh, dengue uh, Aedes mosquitoes are going to have a very short flight range that means they cannot uh, fly far regions so they are going to have a very short flight range and urban spread of dengue is frequently house to house. The mosquito breeds in the tropical and semi-tropical climates in artificial water holding receptacles around human habitation or in plants close to human dwellings. Then this uh, actually, the dengue virus was first recognized as an epidemic uh, in the regions of Asia, Africa, North America, okay, in the year 1799. And it was considered as a pandemic began in uh, Southeast Asia in the 1950s. And by 1975, dengue hemorrhage fever, simply called as DHF, had began a leading cause of death among children in this region. And it became epidemic and more common since in the 1980s and in the 90s this was considered as the most important mosquito borne disease affecting humans next to malaria. So this is all about the epidemiology. Then moving to the pathogenesis in humans clinical disease begins uh, between the 2 to 15 days after an infective mosquito bite. Now the patient develops fever of a sudden onset with a headache chills, malice, retrobulbular pain, conjunctivitis and severe pain in the back muscles and joints which we consider it as a breakbone fever. Then the fever returns to normal after 5 to 6 days or may subside in about the third day but it will raise again about 5 to 8 days after the onset and that is going to be called as saddleback form. And during this we are going to have some sort of uh, characters which appear on the third day or fourth day and last for 24 to 72 hours and the fading with uh, disquamation that means the rash appears on third or fourth day and it will remain for 24 to 72 hours and it fades as a disquamation. Now simultaneously we are going to have the swelling of uh, lymph nodes okay so which is called as lymphadenopathy then leukopenia with a relatively lymphocytosis is a regular occurrence that we can observe in the dengue fever. Lymphocytosis uh, is going to be of another important this one. Then convulsions may take weeks although complications and death are rare. A more severe syndrome that is dengue hemorrhage fever may occur in individuals when a patient is having antibodies against a particular serotype of dengue virus produced by earlier encounter or by transmission of maternal antibodies that is from the mother to the baby. Even the dengue shock syndrome is going to be characterized by the shock and hemo concentration may supervene. So these altered manifestations of dengue are most often reported from of Southeast Asia where severe, uh, several dengue virus serotopes are regularly present. So we have seen only four. So other than these four also in Southeast Asia were reported. Okay. So here you can see the symptoms of dengue fever. So we can have these things as a, a three phases are going to be classified uh, according to the symptoms of dengue fever. That is a febrile phase. Then we are having the critical phase than the recovery phase. The first febrile phase is going to be of a sudden onset uh, fever, then you feel of headache, mouth and nose bleeding may occur, okay, and then you will feel of a muscle and joint pains where we call it as a breakbone fever, then you may have the sense of uh, vomiting, rash and even the diarrhea. So these are all the initial stages where we can see uh, which lasts for uh, seven days after you are going to have the dengue infection. Then coming to the second phase is a critical phase where you feel of hypotension then the pleural effusion. So what is meant by pleural effusion means 
uh, water on the lungs that means uh, where you are going to have the build up of excess fluid between the layers of the pleural outside the lungs that is between the lungs and the tissues is being called as pleural effusion then you may also have some sort of symptom called as ascites so ascites is nothing but the abdominal swelling uh, caused by accumulation of fluids is called as ascites then we can also see the, some sort of gastrointestinal bleeding so these are all the symptoms that we find in the critical phase then moving to the recovery phase so here in the recovery phase we are going to have the altered level of uh, consciousness then caesareus where caesareus is a sudden uncontrolled electrical disturbance in the brain then you feel of the itching on the skin and the slow heart rate so these are all going to be considered as a recovery phase symptoms so that's how the symptoms of the dengue fever is going to be of uh, three phases that is febrile phase then critical phase then the recovery phase then coming to the laboratory diagnosis during epidemics dengue can be diagnosed clinically by typical signs and symptoms the clinical uh, symptoms we know that high fever bladder problem constant headache eye, eye pain uh, that is retro thing then severe dizziness loss of appetite hemorrhage tendency that is bleeding from mucus gingiva vomiting blood or bledgy diarrhea and even encephalitis occurring so these are all going to be considered as clinically things then how can you uh, identify laboratory means the disease can be diagnosed in the laboratory by the demonstration of antibodies in the patient serum by several tests like complement fixation test hemagglutination uh, test or inhibition test and the ELISA and a strip of immunochromatographic test is also available for rapid diagnosis nowadays then moving to the prevention and control so obviously we are supposed to control by using the mosquito measure controlling the mosquito measures so example elimination of breeding places and the use of uh, insecticides so you are supposed to remove the stagnant water either in your pots or in the surroundings or in the buckets or in the ties wherever you find the stagnant water it has to be removed because those are the places where the mosquitoes will breed and increase the population so we have to cut off its breeding places and then use of insecticides and the mosquito repellents have to be used along with this nowadays uh, vaccines are being uh, under development that means they are not in usage but they are being under development okay so these are all the prevention and control measures that we have to follow for preventing this dengue fever okay and this is all about the dengue fever which is caused by a virus called as dengue virus so then we have discussed about the cause situation so this is how it looks and then the epidemiology how it is getting transmitted from one person to other then what are the pathogenesis that means what is happening when it enters into the body then what are the symptoms so febrile phase critical phase and the recovery phase then the laboratory diagnosis then moving to the prevention and control so that's all about the dengue fever thank you